Well, good morning, everybody. It's an honor to welcome you today to our commencement service for the graduating class of 2022. I want to welcome, yeah, come on, yeah. And I do want to welcome, of course, everyone who's here at our Grants Mill location and as well as everyone who is joining us online. Can you put your hands together and welcome those who are joining us online and couldn't be here today? And my name is Mark Pettis and I have the honor of serving as the president of Highlands College and today is a special day. We are so excited for the 114 graduates who are going to cross this stage here in a few moments and we're just so incredibly proud of them today we're gonna have a great ceremony uh, we're gonna have times of worship we're gonna reflect on what's been a, a, a wild journey a little different journey than anyone expected over the last couple of years of course and really more than anything else today we're going to magnify our God and thank him for his faithfulness for what he's done in the lives of all of our incredible graduates and so thank you so much for being here today it's going to be a special time together. Our mission at Highlands College is rooted in Luke chapter 10, verse 2, which says, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Therefore, pray to the Lord of the harvest to send workers into the harvest field. And that is our passion here at Highlands College. This is our mission, to raise up young men and women of God who are, who are passionate about the kingdom of God advancing in this generation, to raise them up here and then to send them into that harvest field to love a world that desperately needs the love of God. And that's what's happened in the lives of these 114 graduates over the last two years. They've become those laborers. They've become those leaders for the harvest field. Over the last two years, they've applied themselves in the classroom. They have spent countless hours being trained in ministry. They have matured in biblical character, and most importantly, in their love and devotion to Jesus Christ. And I just gotta say, it has been an honor to watch that journey happen. For, and I'm speaking on behalf of our entire team at the college as well as at the church. Uh, you have raised incredible young men and women. It's been an, uh, men and women, and it's been an honor for us to steward their lives over the last uh, couple of years. And so there's no way any of that would have happened without you. So I'm grateful for everyone who is here, but especially want to recognize today any parents or guardians of a graduate. Would you stand just for a moment and let us honor you? If you're in the room today, we want to honor you. Incredible. You, you may be seated. We just want to honor you today. Thank you for trusting us with your, with your child. And it, it's, it's been amazing to watch them grow. And we, we are praying that the firm foundation they've received will just continue to flourish into the years to come. Also want to take a moment and would love your help, and that is to honor the incredible staff and faculty of Highlands College and the team at Church of the Highlands. Would you guys in our, in our Highlands College board? Yeah, thank you so much. It's the joy of my life to work with some of the best people on the planet, and we are just dedicated to this mission. And that all starts because we have an incredible visionary. And Pastor Chris, I wanna take a moment and honor you as our chancellor and as our senior pastor. Thank you for this vision. Thank you for allowing all of us to be a part of this vision. And as great as all of this has been, and it's been amazing, we know that the best days are still ahead of us and that we're gonna see the answer to that prayer of Jesus, the fulfillment of the Great Commission in Jesus' name. Can y'all honor our chancellor, WPC. All right, the moment has come. If you would, stand to your feet and let's welcome our graduating class of 2022.
please join me in prayer. Father God, we worship and exalt your holy name. You are our banner of victory. Thank you for bringing us together to celebrate the works you've done in our lives over the past two years. And thank you for the freedom we have in knowing that we don't have to win what has already been won for us on the cross. I pray that as every student walks this stage, we would be reminded of the countless times you faithfully provided for us when we needed you most. I pray that we would be reminded that as the heavens are higher than the earth, your ways are higher than our ways, and your thoughts are higher than our thoughts. I pray that no matter where we go or what we do, we would trust in you with all our hearts and lean not on our own understanding or calculation, but in everything that we do, we would acknowledge you and we would submit to you that you might make our path straight. Jesus, the harvest is plentiful and we are your workers here in this room. Thank you, God. Thank you for choosing us. As we are sent out, may we never, ever lose the wonder and the awe of being sons and daughters of the Most High God. May we seek to dwell in the house of the Lord for all of our days, Jesus, never forgetting to keep in step with your Holy Spirit forever. I pray that we would never lose sight of our first love. Be our hearts one true desire above all else so that we might be the salt and the light of the world, that they might taste and see that you are good by our love and example, the very love and example that you showed us on the cross. I pray that in the name of Jesus Christ, no weapon formed against us would prosper as we combat the lies and the illusions of the enemy with the truth of your living and active word. King Jesus, you are worthy of all the praise, for yours is the kingdom, yours is the power, and yours is the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please take your seats and enjoy our year in review video.
I tell you what, what an incredible journey. I could watch that all over again. So many memories, so many moments. Come on, half marathon, the expedition, and just going from Greystone over to Grandview. Uh, what a journey. And as we think about this class, and I mentioned a little bit of this, of this earlier, you know, part of this class started in January of 2020 and experienced an unprecedented uh, spring semester. And then the other part of this class started there in the fall of 2020. And I just wanna speak this over you. We're gonna present some more awards here in a moment, but I wanna speak over the entire class. Uh, you are a group of students who are full of perseverance. You are a group of students who are full of character. What I love about your character is that you have looked for ways to learn. You have taken what could have been viewed as a bad situation and you've turned it for good. You've turned those situations into maybe some of the greatest, honestly, learning opportunities. And more than anything else, you are a class of conviction. You are here, there, it doesn't make any sense on paper other than you are called by God. Many reasons you could have quit, but you have something deep inside that would not allow you to quit. And so can we all together one more time honor this incredible class. We love you, we're proud of you. And at Highlands College, we, we do have a mission, that's to supply the church with leaders of character and competence and spiritual maturity, holistically trained to lead lives of eternal impact by fulfilling the Great Commission. And to do that, we've built all of our programming around what we call the four pillars, which are academic instruction, ministry training, character formation, and spiritual development. And at this time, we're gonna recognize some students who've excelled in these areas. I would like to invite, uh, to help me with this, some of our executive team, if you guys would make your way to the stage. And each of these recipients, this is important for all of us to catch, they were selected by their peers first. They were confirmed by our faculty and staff, but these were peer-selected awards, which I think just speaks highly of the ones who are gonna receive these and, and really the entire student body. And as we call your name here in a moment, uh, please come to the stage to receive your award. And we're gonna start with uh, academic instruction. The Academic Instruction Award recognizes the student who developed their intellect and increased their knowledge of God while growing in integrity and wisdom, but mostly in dependence on God. They displayed exceptional understanding of their Christ-centered calling and an understanding and a growth in the wisdom and knowledge of the Word of God all during their journey here at Highlands College. This year's recipient of the Academic Instruction Award is Jackson Reedy. Exciting. The Ministry Training Award recognizes the student who displayed exceptional skill and leadership in their ministry training setting and took ownership in their practicum while at Highlands College. They displayed exceptional application of their knowledge and effectiveness as a ministry leader for the local church. So it's my great honor to present this year's recipient of the Ministry Training Award, which is Ashley Juniak. The Character Formation Award recognizes the student who developed Christ-like character through time spent investing in relationships with mentors and peers. They developed the discipline to make tough decisions, the tenacity to overcome adversity, and the humility to build and maintain meaningful relationships. This year's recipient of the Character Formation Award is Daniel De Hoyos.
The Spiritual Development Award recognizes the student who demonstrates their personal devotion to God and commitment to participating in the local church, chapels, small groups, and relationships with others. They have built a foundation for a lifetime of spiritual growth while at Highlands College. This year's recipient of the Spiritual Development Award is Richie Leatherwood. <laughs> My favorite part of the ceremony is seeing you guys celebrate them, which is just incredible. Uh, finally, the last award we're going to present today is our Presidential Award, which goes to one graduate that represents, <laughs> that represents how strengths in each of these four areas combine into truly a leader that meets what we meant, mentioned earlier, our mission statement, character, competency, and spiritual maturity. This graduate is an example of discipline and commitment. When people are looking and when they're not, she faithfully pursues God and His Word. She loves people intentionally and makes every person feel seen. This graduate served the students of River Chase Campus by walking with them through some of the, the best seasons and toughest seasons of their life and continually points them to Jesus. She never meets a stranger and always leaves you better than she found you. She served Highlands College faithfully as an ambassador and just did an incredible job. She pursues and stewards the opportunities God gives her with all she has. She brings enthusiasm and joy into every room, every conversation. She is bold and confident in what God has called her to do. She does not quit, but digs in her heels and makes sure she has the faith to step into every situation because she knows how God has made her. Highlands College is better because of her, better because she was here, and so I'm, I'm personally so grateful she's part of the HC family. Please welcome this year's Presidential Award winner, China. The day we have been waiting for is finally here. Wouldn't y'all agree? It is my pleasure to welcome students, families, and faculty to the graduation day at Highlands College. Every one of you have made an impact on the graduates who sits here today. I am honored and humbled to be, to be standing before you today to leave you with encouragement and to build your faith as one door closes and a new door opens. Highlands College has truly shaped me and molded me into the woman of God that I am today. Thank you to Pastor Mark and Jill. Thank you to Pastor Chris and Miss Tammy for making the vision that God birthed inside of your hearts years ago. Seeing it come into fruition was a blessing. We are so honored that we are standing in your yes today. And to my mom, I said I wasn't gonna cry. And to all the families in the room, thank you for praying for us daily, listening to us, encouraging us, and constantly giving us feedback. Thank you for protecting us and listening to God's voice throughout this entire process. Everything you have done for us has led us to this moment, and we are eternally grateful for you. We're eternally grateful for your leadership and your integrity that has taught us so much throughout this journey. To the students, we did it, y'all. We made it. Let's go. Thank you for believing in me when I didn't believe in myself, for standing next to me when the days got hard, and for calling me to a higher standard. Because of each and every one of you, I am better today. You guys really mean the world to me, and I love you guys so much. To the Highlands College teachers and staff, thank you for spending hours 
and hours and hours to help us write paper after paper after paper. You guys not only help us succeed in life, in, in class, but in life. Y'all are more than just teachers. Y'all are family, mentors, and leaders that have a, made a huge impact on us who sits here today. It's funny, looking back over two years, they went by so fast and so slow all at the same time. But the one moment that I'll never forget is Expedition. Throwback to when Expedition was at Grant's Mill. Yeah. With 10 and a half miles, 16 obstacles, and the team that made us closer than ever. That was the moment in my life where I knew I could do anything if I truly put my mind to it. Or how about when we had to show up to class with green screens on our phone called health checks. Yeah. Or to take y'all all the way back when we had Zoom Wednesdays on, on Zoom. Or when we had to sit three seats away from each other in chapel, unless it was your roommates. Over the last two years, as this season come to an end and we step into a new season, one thing we can't forget is God has each given us different gifts, but one unique calling. When times get hard and we want to quit, something we can hold on to is that God has given us an irrevocable calling, meaning once he gives it to us, he can't take it away. In Romans 11:29, it states, for God gifts and his calls are irrevocable. And so to the class of 2022, the last thing I leave with you today is never forget the gifts and the calls that are irrevocable in your life. Never forget what God has placed in your lives today. Go out into the world and make an eternal impact. Always keep him in first and always remember why you have chosen to do ministry. Because the harvest is plentiful and the workers are few. Class of 2022, last thing, TV Please help me welcome our Chancellor, Pastor Chris Hodges, to the stage. Come on, give China a good hand, everybody. She did so good. You can be seated. God bless you guys. Wow, what a special day. My goodness, I'm, I'm over there just dabbing my eyes the whole time, and it started when you just walked into the room, and just, um, I'm just so proud of you, and leaned over to Tammy and just said, man, what a, what a miracle today is in every way, and to see what God has done, and we, we appreciate the honor, but um, we're not this good. All the glory and honor goes to King Jesus himself. Come on, give him, come on, give Jesus praise, everybody. And this is the dream, uh, not that you would come, but that you would graduate and, and be placed and go make a difference. And I just give you my charge and, and my blessing and uh, my encouragement to go make a difference in this world. And I'm so excited about this day. Uh, today is also a special day because I had the chance, uh, the opportunity to welcome uh, our guest speaker today, who's a longtime member of our church, who... Uh, attended our, has attended our church, I'll let him tell the story, but nearly since the beginning of our church, but was elected to the Alabama Supreme Court in 2018. Uh, Justice Mitchell graduated Phi Beta Kappa from Birmingham Southern College, where he played uh, basketball. You'll see that in a second. There's about six feet difference between his height and mine, and so... <laughs> Uh, and on the 1995 National Championship basketball team and served as president of the student body. He earned his law degree from the University of Virginia School of Law. Uh, Jay and his wife, Elizabeth, have been married for 20 years and have four children, and he's an exceptional leader uh, in every way. He's been rated as one of the top litigators in the United States and has received the high possible, highest possible ratings for professional ethics. Uh, he also has the distinct honor, and listen to this, of sending three of his clerks to go clerk at the United States Supreme Court, a testament to his skill and integrity. Please welcome my good friend and Associate Justice of the Alabama Supreme Court, Jay Mitchell.
Thank you, Pastor Chris. Good morning, everybody. Twenty years ago this month, my lovely wife Elizabeth, who's over here with me, uh, she and I walked into Mountain Brook High School on a Sunday morning. We were in our first year of marriage, and we just graduated law school and moved to Birmingham to start studying for the bar exam and to begin our jobs. As we got going, we knew we needed to find a home church, and we knew about Church of the Highlands, and we respected the people we knew who went there, but frankly, our expectations that Sunday weren't particularly high. That first service was nice, but it was not a thunderclap moment for us. It was not a, you know, a voice from heaven saying, this is where you will worship. Uh, but God was there, and there was a warmth to the environment. And as Elizabeth and I said goodbye to a couple of people on the way out of the building, I turned to her and I said, what'd you think? And she said, I liked it. I'd go back. So we went back the following Sunday, and the Sunday after that, and the Sunday after that, and we've been coming here every Sunday since, <laughs> now with four kids in tow. Suffice it to say, we love our church, and we love the people of our church. In fact, what we tell people is that Highlands is a big part of the DNA of our family. It shaped our marriage. It shaped how we parent our kids. It shaped how we interact with our neighbors and the community. And it shaped how I lead at the Alabama Supreme Court. And many of the ways that Highlands has shaped us have also begun to shape you through your time at Highlands College. Raising up ministry leaders has always been a priority here. I was witness to that at the very beginning when young people started making their way to Alabama to be trained and to help plant this new thing called Church of the Highlands. I remember Pastor John Larson as intern John Larson standing out in the Mountain Brook High School lobby, scrambling to make CDs of Pastor Christus's message right after the service. <laughs> I remember Hayes Kirby parking cars and doing hilarious early versions of Highlands News. And, and I won't get started on Kellen Cold Iron. I could tell some stories there, too. <laughs> God was doing something very special in those days. He was raising up young leaders in the church and instilling them with character and a strong sense of excellence. Along the way, Pastor Chris realized that this had to be bigger. The harvest was plentiful, but the workers were few. There was a need for a ministry training college where young leaders could be educated and equipped for vocational ministry, specifically in the church context. And then came the recognition that there were others who needed this kind of education. Men and women who may never go into full-time ministry but desired to be better ministers in their families, in the marketplace, and in their communities. Flash forward about a decade and a half, and with God's grace, top-notch leadership from Pastor Chris and Pastor Mark Pettis, and the hard work, prayers, and support of so many, here we are, with full-fledged traditional and evening programs, 721 students and growing, a gleaming new campus with facilities second to none, on deck for full accreditation in the Association of Biblical Higher Education, and the foundation for an endowment that will allow other godly young leaders to come here and be educated without having to incur student debt and without having to rely on the government for any funding. Look at what God has done and at what he's doing. And can we just stop right here and thank him? You're a part of something very special, and you've been equipped in a very special way. In fact, you've assembled a toolbox of knowledge and skills that will carry you through the next chapters of your lives. And if we had longer together, we could open that box and examine all kinds of tools, your biblical worldview, how to worship God with your whole heart in all that you do, how to pray based on a correct understanding of who God is and what He has promised to us as His children, how to live in community with other believers, and how to keep the faith in a world of unbelievers and cynics. 
But what I'd like to do in the next few minutes that we have together is hold up three tools that you now have and that will serve you well as you walk out of here. First, you have an understanding of God's Word. As a justice on the state Supreme Court, I'm often asked, Jay, what kind of judge are you? And I tell them, I'm a textualist and I'm an originalist. So what does that mean? Well, being a textualist just means that I think words have objective meaning and that a court's job is to apply that meaning. Whenever our court is called upon to interpret a legal text, whether it's a constitutional provision or a statute that's been passed by the legislature, my job is to interpret that text as it's written on the page, which means I'm looking for the objective public meaning of those words, not trying to twist them into something I might want them to say. That's what it means to be a textualist. I'm also an originalist. Sometimes we have words or phrases that are from a long time ago, maybe even a century or two ago. And when we're faced with that, my job is not to infuse that language with contemporary meanings. It's to go back and see what those words and phrases meant at the time they were adopted. That's what it means to be an originalist. We're called to read God's Word in the same way. When we're confronted with Scripture, we don't read and interpret it based on what we or the broader culture want it to say. We read it based on what God said, whether we like it or not. Yes, the ancient language of Scripture has application for, day, for today. That's why we have the Holy Spirit, to help us discern how to apply, help us to discern how to apply Scripture to present circumstances. But we work from the past forward. What did God say in His Word? Then we ask Him to show us how to apply that truth to today. We don't put our own modern, contemporary gloss on Scripture, then decide, well, that, that must be what it means. And that's because of who God is. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's unchangeable. And the truth of Scripture does not change as much as we or society may want it to sometimes. Graduates, you've learned at Highlands College, especially through your theology and worldview classes, how to read and apply the Bible, how it's put together, why there are different translations and what value each of them has, the meaning of key books, chapters, and passages, and how to read those in context, how all of the Bible, the Old Testament and the New, points to Jesus, and how we as the Big C Church are living out God's redemptive story, even today. The world celebrates sinfulness and false hopes, which is why we need ministers of Jesus who are anchored into the authority and stability of God's Word. And as you walk out of here, you're taking with you that understanding of how to read and apply God's Word. And I want to encourage you, stay committed to reading and applying His Word based on what it says, not on what you or culture may want it to say. The second tool that I want to hold up this morning is that you have the ability to lead with outstretched arms. In the 20 years that our family has been at Highlands, there have been times of testing and crisis, career decisions tough circumstances in our family. And I'll tell you, our church has always been there for us. The greatest moment of crisis for our family came in December of 2017. It was a very busy time for us. The kids were at the end of the school semester. We were doing Christmas shopping and preparing for the holidays. And I was traveling all around the state trying to get elected to the Alabama Supreme Court. Our son Jack was in the fifth grade, and he had come to Elizabeth and said that he had felt some lumps near his collarbone. And then about a month or two later, he came back and said that he felt some other lumps kind of over here near his neck. So Elizabeth began taking him to some doctors. And I'm not going to give you the entire medical story, but suffice it to say, after some fits and starts, I got a call one afternoon from the ENT who had checked Jack out. I remember standing in our driveway about a week before Christmas, and the doctor said, Jay, I've just looked over Jack's test results. There's a very high possibility that he has leukemia or lymphoma. 
and you need to go get them right now and put them in your car and take them down to the emergency room at Children's Hospital. There's a team of doctors and nurses waiting on you. Well, you can imagine the shock. It felt like somebody had punched me in the gut. After I called Elizabeth, who was out doing Christmas shopping with our girls, I went upstairs to get Jack. And I was upset, but I didn't want Jack to see that. So I, I ducked into one of our girls' rooms and shut the door and just, and just frankly, just bawled. Uh, I needed to get it out before I went to see him. But I got Jack, I got him down to Children's, and after we got checked in and, and got back to the room, I texted Pastor Chris and Pastor Lane Schrantz to give them the news of what was going on. It was the first night of Highlands Christmas, so you can imagine, pretty busy time here at the church. Lane called me right away. He was on his way to one of the campuses, and he said, hey, I'm, I'm going to divert. I'll be right there. And then Pastor Chris called me. He was just about to come out and give the message in the Highlands Christmas service, and he prayed for Jack and for me and Elizabeth and our family and said he would catch up with Lane later that night. And then Lane arrived. He actually beat Elizabeth to the hospital. <laughs> and he sat with us for hours, hanging out with us while the doctors came in and out of the room. And when the head doctor came in to deliver some very tough news, Lane was right there with us. But he wasn't just present, he pastored us. The doctor, who was a Christian, asked to pray for us. And as she did, Lane was right there amening every one of her prayers. Lane gave us incredible encouragement, speaking scripture and words of life over Jack and our family. And in a moment of near despair, as Jack was hanging his head and crying, it was Lane who lifted his head and breathed courage into him. He said, Jack, God's got you. He has plans and purposes for your life. Cancer is not going to defeat you. You're going to come out of this better and stronger. It really reminded me of like a football coach on the sideline. You know, football player kind of has his head down and he just grabs him by the face mask and says, come on, we got this, we can do this. It was that kind of a moment. A few weeks later, after the first of the year, Jack got a precise diagnosis. He had stage four Hodgkin's lymphoma. The cancer was in his neck, collarbone, chest, hips, spleen, and spine. At that time, we learned he would have to go through multiple cycles of chemotherapy, and we would later learn that he would need radiation as well. The night before Jack was scheduled to start chemo, we gathered here at the church on the first Wednesday. In fact, we were sitting right over there. And after the service, we assembled over in the chapel with family and friends to pray over Jack. Pastor Mark Pettis led us in prayer. Pastors Mayo Sewell and Bubba Massey were right there with us. And as we were gathered around Jack praying, one of our friends, unbeknownst to us, took a step back and took a picture of that gathering. I, th I think we've actually have the picture here. It's up on the screen. And what you'll see here, Jack's in the middle. Pastor Mark has his hands on Jack. We're sur Jack's surrounded by family and close friends. Pastor Bubba's on the outskirts of that gathering with his hands raised. Uh, Pastor Mayo's right there as well. But I love it. It's such a vivid, beautiful depiction to me of the body of Christ in action. Well, I'm happy to report Jack is completely healed and cancer-free. He's doing great. He's in the ninth grade at Homewood High School, playing in the, playing in the marching band and growing like a weed. And uh, we're, we're just so thankful for his life and for his healing. I give you these testimonies, graduates, because I want to point out that this is how Highlands College has equipped you to lead with outstretched arms toward people in need. In the course of your ministry, you're going to encounter people who are facing times of testing and crisis, and you're uniquely equipped to help them. That's because you have the heartbeat of Highlands inside of you, which is the heartbeat of Jesus for people. And you've learned through opportunities and hands-on experience how to be the hands and feet of Jesus, sitting with someone in a moment of grief or uncertainty, grabbing hold of their hand to pray for them and offer encouragement, organizing others to come and surround them in prayer, maybe just checking in on somebody who's going through a tough time, a tough week, making a meal or picking up groceries for someone. There are countless ways to lead on the basis of compassion for others. 
And when you do, others will be drawn to Christ and want to follow Him as well. The third and final tool that I want to hold up this morning is that you have the ability to go out there and spark passion in others for what God is doing at Highlands College. As you may know, I don't do my job at the Supreme Court alone. I have law clerks. These are sharp young lawyers who see the law like I do. And they research the law and help me draft judicial opinions. They also give me feedback and recommendations on how I should vote on other justices' opinions. I work closely with my law clerks on a daily basis to teach them about the law, to help them improve their writing, and to guide them in their careers. As Pastor Chris alluded to, we've had an interesting and providential development lately. Uh, three of my law clerks are heading to clerk for Justice Clarence Thomas of the U.S. Supreme Court, which is very cool. He's one of my judicial heroes, so I'm, I'm, I'm very excited about that. People who follow these trends uh, tell me that it's a rarity for a state court judge to send one clerk to clerk on the U.S. Supreme Court, much less three. And I'd like to take credit for it, but candidly, I'm just a small part of the story. It's attributable first to God, and secondly, to all of the people who have come to clerk for me, not just the three who are going to clerk for Justice Thomas. My clerks believe in our shared project of bringing principles of textualism and originalism to bear in interpreting Alabama law. And they want to see our project succeed. They know that to do that, I need to have law clerks in the future who are just as good, if not better, than they are. So they're out there identifying and recruiting their successors, sending young lawyers my way who can make me better as a judge and make my work better. As a result, year by year, our team is going from strength to strength, and our shared project is advancing. Let me submit to you, graduates, you are part of a great project called Highlands College. You're helping to build something very special for the future, and it does not end here today. The only way it will become better and succeed is if future classes of students who are as good or better than you come to the college. So go out and find them in your hometowns and in the churches and ministries where you land. Talk up Highlands College, post good news on social media, wear the sweatshirt. And when you're in those churches and ministries, hire Highlands College graduates and help to develop them. I'll tell you, there will be critics along the way. There always are. I've got them too. Listen for the voices of those who want Highlands College to get better. You can learn from those voices. But the voices of those who want to attack and tear down, ignore them. Don't even engage with them. Uh, I'm reminded of the story of Nehemiah, who was engaged in a great work leading the rebuilding of the walls of Jerusalem. And if you go back to Nehemiah 6, 1 through 9, it says that Nehemiah's enemies sent him messages trying to discourage him and bring him down from his work of rebuilding the walls. And Nehemiah says there in verses 2 and 3, they intended to do me harm. And I sent messengers to them saying, I am doing a great work, and I cannot come down. Why should the work stop while I leave it and come down to you? <laughs> You're part of a great work, something each of you can look back on decades from now and be immensely proud of. But it's going to take all of us working together, cultivating passion for Highlands College and others, and giving God glory along the way. Let's build it together. In conclusion, I just want to congratulate all of you. It's a big day. Congratulations to each of you and your families. I'm honored to be a part of this day. And I just want to say God bless you and Godspeed as you continue your ministry journey. Graduates, please stay standing. Everyone else can take your seats. Thank you, Justice Mitchell, for that incredible word for our graduates and encouragement for the future. Graduates, today is not the end of the journey. It's actually just the beginning. 
At Highlands College, you've learned that there's no shortcut to success. It's the result of obeying God, preparing, working hard, and learning from failure. It has been the great honor of the faculty and staff of Highlands College to have the opportunity to both teach you and learn from you. Today, we honor you because you have chosen to honor God. By committing to the authority of Scripture, by pursuing a Christ-centered life, by demonstrating a passion for lifelong learning, by developing your mind for the fulfilling of the Great Commission, having fulfilled all the requirements for graduation, and upon the recommendation of the faculty and the approval of the executive leadership and the board of directors of Highlands College, I confer upon these graduates, for the very first time, the Associate of Arts in Ministry Leadership, the Advanced Certificate of Ministry Leadership. Graduates, please prepare to receive your certificates. graduating with the Associate of Arts in Ministry Training, China Tanay Patterson. Alexander Sungmin Yu. Monica Danielle Alfaro. Parker Douglas Allen. Mark Austin. Ben Bales. Kateria Renee Blevins. Macy Victoria Bond. <laughs> Amelia Macy Bostic. <laughs> Nicholas Bramucci. <laughs> Haley Jordan Brown. Andrew Canavan. <laughs> Nandi Amina Brown Kanundi. <laughs> Cooper Joseph Capello. Jacoby Crenshaw. Caden John Cronkright. Gavin Fisher Krause.
Daniel De Hoyas. Jordan Draper. Caitlin Marie Duby. Taylor Etheridge with honors. Laura Hope Fuller. Jake Aaron Gannon. Samuel Paul Garmany. <laughs> Leslie Gill Rodriguez. <laughs> Lauren Elizabeth Goodman. <laughs> Elijah Green. Mary Griffin. <laughs> William Bryce Hagler. <laughs> Austin Hardy. Kaylee Raquel Helms. <laughs> Taylor Alexis Hendricks. <laughs> Christiane Jolie Hubble. <laughs> Ethan Joshua Hunt. Randy Jacob is a choir. Kendall Brooke Jennings. Pierce Calloway Johnson with honors. Elise Jones. Yeah. Kirsten Lee Jones. Yeah. Ashley Juniak with honors. Yeah. Sarah Bethany Cole with honors. Jackson Thomas Kyle. <laughs> Haley Marie Lashley. <laughs> Delaney Longley with honors. <laughs> Caesar Lopez. <laughs> Joseph Mangum. Ashton Marusis. Marley Bob Nicole Mason. Emily Ann Mayer.
Matthew McCord. Demi McDonald. Emanuela Angelique Montalban. Kyla Danae Moore. Sarah James Morgan with honors. Sheridan Noel Mullins. Crystal Orozco. John Braxton Pate. Jenna Marie Reed. Jackson Scott Reedy with honors. Jonathan Robertson. AJ Rodriguez. Inslee Hope Russell. Peyton Thomas Russell. Kirk. Kirk William Samuelson. Grace Scott. Brody Travis Smith. Laney Rose Smith. Zachary Smothers. Austin Spann. <laughs> Micah David Spinks. <laughs> Georgia Joe Terwilliger with honors. Sean Treg. Megan Nicole Usury. Jada Nicole Warren. Ella Bryn White. Grace Ann Williams. Mabry Grace Williamson. <laughs> Brianna Willis with honors. <laughs> Lauren Elizabeth Wood. Meredith Lee Woodfin. <laughs> T 
Thomas William Wright with honors. <laughs> Students graduating with the Advanced Certificate of Ministry Leadership. Justin Benton. Alexis Nicole Bonner. Juliana Ray Boyce. Alexandra Byrne. Justin Cooper. <laughs> Kerrigan Davis. <laughs> Kaylee Durham. <laughs> David Felice with honors. Josmar Gill. <laughs> Abigail Johnson. <laughs> Anna Louise Kearns. Richard Leatherwood. <laughs> Kiara Lee Lindsay with honors. <laughs> Chloe Marusis. <laughs> Elizabeth Grace McConnell. Melody Gabrielle McNeil with honors. Carlos Patino Jr. Julie Lane Podiak with honors. Halen Saucer. Yeah. Trevor Sanford. Yeah. Parker Thomas James Short. David Austin Stratton. Victoria Thorpe with honors. Asia Renee Turner. David Undelin. Israel Vazquez. <laughs> Joshua Luke Waldman. <laughs> Luke Williford. Joshua Wright.
Come on, let's give him another hand, everybody. Well done, well done. Can I invite all of you to stand for a moment, please? And I'm going to pray a prayer of blessing over you students. And um, we've we poured heart and soul, everything we have into you. But the most important thing that's on your life is no, nothing that we gave you. It will be what God puts on your life. Can I hear a better amen, everybody? Isn't that right? And there's a prayer I pray every single day over my own life, have for more than 20 years. And it's just a prayer of Jabez. It's just blessing. And blessing means he'll give you more than you could have ever accomplished on your own. Uh, in fact, Jabez prayed, bless me indeed. And then for influence, enlarge my territory. God will give you influence. Again, put people in your life, opportunities in your life. And then he said, let your hand be upon me. I just call that presence. That's when you, when you speak, serve, whatever you do with your life, that God's anointing is on your life. His, his hand is upon you. And then finally, he says, and keep me from harm, that, that the enemy would never have his way in your life, that you'd be protected. Blessing, influence, presence, and protection. Would you open your hands to the Lord? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we commission these students, these graduates, to the work of the Lord. And God, I pray, Father, that the, that the things that set their hands to prosper. Lord, I'm asking you to put the right people, the right opportunities. God, just every, everything that they need from you in their lives. And Lord, I speak the prayer of Jabez over them. I'm asking for blessing. God, that you would supernaturally push them forward, that you would add to them in ways that they could have never had on their own. Lord, I'm asking you for influence, God, with the right people who will continue their education and their training, especially over the next 10 or 15 years, God, that you would put the right mentors and the right people, and God, even give them opportunity, God, to people that they never would have dreamed they'd be in the same room with. Lord, you give them opportunities to minister in places they never thought they'd go. Give them influence, I pray. Lord, I'm asking you for your hand to be upon them. Let the presence of God the anointing of Almighty God be on their lives in every way, God, that they would be carriers of the presence of God. And Lord, I thank you, God, that you'll keep them from harm. We bind the plan of the devil right now, collectively, in the name of Jesus, off of their lives. Lord, I pray, Father, you'd surround them with favor like a shield. And Lord, keep them from harm in every way. And I break the, the power of darkness off their lives, God, and loose the Spirit of God on their lives in every way. We bless them, parents, faculty, team members, staff members, all those that love them. God, we speak blessing over their lives right now, commissioning them to the work of the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus and for the glory of the one that we serve. And all God's people said a good. Congratulations, class of 2022. <laughs> and now, you, uh, as they play behind uh, this, this song, you guys will, we, will be dismissed to recess.
right, one more time. Can you help me honor our graduates, 2022 graduates? And thank you so much for being here today. I wanted just one last announcement to let you know that we're, ho we're hosting an open house over at the Highlands College campus today from 12.30 to 4.30. So if you go to lunch, that's great. You still have time to come back over to campus. We'd love to host you. God bless, have a great day.